Stocks are starting to recover a little bit, and so we don't know what type of sales are gonna be out there for long. So I wanted to get this information out to you quick and accurate so that you can make a good decision this next month. In this group, there's gonna be a couple of dividends over 6% and many companies with room to grow. Let's get after it. This first one is a semiconductor manufacturing company, and that's very important because they're the ones manufacturing all the chips with this chip shortage going on. They're gonna be in high demand for the foreseeable future. This is the first one on my list, and it's not a huge dividend yield, but what I like about it is its chance to be able to grow because a small dividend of something that's worth a lot more that you got to buy in at a lot less is gonna be worth more no matter how you look at it. So this one has a dividend yield of a little over 2%. It has a five-year dividend growth rate of over 10% and a payout ratio of over 7%. This company's called Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company Limited, or TSM, and they dominate their industry. Even so, the stock is down by nearly a third year to date. In my opinion, this is more of a dividend growth stock, and so I really like it for a long-term play. This next one comes from the age-old wisdom that dates all the way back to the gold rush. Back at that time, everyone was working day and night and even moving from other parts of the country to come get their hands on some gold. And so while everyone was focused on trying to mine for that gold, they were all competing in a very, very competitive space. And so while some of them were able to get nice, solid, rich pieces of gold, a lot of them left empty handed. But there was a very smart group of people that understood that whether the people mining for gold found gold or didn't find gold, gold, they needed some supplies in order to even mine for the gold in the first place. This next company does that exact same thing. And this one's called Enterprise Products Partners, EPD. They have a whopping 7.39% dividend yield, and they're an oil stock, but with a little bit of a twist. For some investors, the idea of putting money to work in an oil stock sends shivers running down their spine. It was just a little over two years ago that the historic demand drawdown associated with the COVID-19 pandemic sent crude oil and natural gas prices plummeting. But you don't have to worry about that with this company. That's because Enterprise Products Partners is a midstream energy company. Midstream providers basically are the middlemen of the energy complex. They provide transmission pipelines, storage spaces, and processing facilities. What makes Enterprise Products Partners such a safe energy stock is that like many other midstream oil and gas stocks, it leans on fixed fee contracts. There are few, if any, surprises when it comes to the company's operating cash flow in a given year. This company is at the forefront of all this new infrastructure stuff that we're gonna be putting in here in the United States. And speaking of that, they have about 5.5 billion tied up in these new infrastructure contracts in the next years. They've also increased their dividend every year for the last 24 years. So this is a pretty safe bet. I like this one short term and long term. My next pick is Merck and Co, MRK, and they outperformed the S&P 500 by a wide margin this year. Merck has a bunch of different products and companies that it's the parent for, and specifically, Keytruda recorded a 23% increase in sales, Gardasil sales were up 59%, and Bridion, Linparza, and Linvima all registered double digit sales growth. Keytruda is the leader in the immuno oncology market with strong efficacy in several cancer types. And by some estimates, sales of Keytruda will be double that of any other drug by 2026. Merck is the fourth largest pharmaceutical company on the globe and it boasts the third largest research and development budget. Merck has a dividend yield of over 3%, a payout ratio of under 36%, and a five year dividend growth rate, almost 9%. Merck's a company that's gonna be around for a long time, and so investing in something like this might be a smart idea. The next company that I'm gonna pick is actually a REIT. And this REIT is actually the largest mall REIT in the United States. This one is called Simon Property Group, S. PG. This chart highlights the fact that the company's malls are located in areas with high population densities and high household incomes. Now this one's interesting because a lot of people think that malls are just going to become obsolete, especially with the rise of all this digital stuff. But what I've seen, and especially with talking with my younger students, they crave that face-to-face -face interaction because so much of their life has been digital. And so I think malls are going to make a big comeback and maybe they'll be different than when I was 
was a kid, but I do think that that space for humans to be interactive with each other is going to be something that's gonna be highly valued. And so a company that has that as their core strategy I definitely want to be invested in that. The current dividend yield for this is 6.26% and the five-year dividend growth rate is 3.63%. This next one's interesting and you know if you've been following this channel for any period of time that I love ETFs. And if you haven't been following this channel for any period of time, subscribe to this channel right now, give it a like. I think that ETF should be the foundation of any portfolio and I think that because any really wealthy person I know in my life has that as a foundation. Now it's not the funnest thing in the world or the most sexy thing ever, but it is one of the safer ways to do it and it does help you sleep at night. And one of my favorite ETFs is a growth ETF, which means that it has a lot of potential to just skyrocket. And that one is called QQQ. And the company that provides it is called Invesco. I looked into the overall company of Invesco and what I found was very interesting. Invesco is an investment management firm that serves both retail and institutional markets worldwide. Its asset classes include equity, fixed income, money market, and others. It also provides mutual funds, ETFs, indexing, individual savings accounts, and various other products. Their company financials were through the roof and very, very solid with high growth potential. Invesco has a current dividend yield of over 4% and they're down over 23% for the year, so very much on sale. And one of the coolest pieces of news that I've found is that they rolled out a $30 million metaverse fund that I'm extremely excited about. I think the possibilities are endless for this metaverse idea and so every company that gets involved early might have a pretty solid payout long term. This next one has a dividend yield of over 9%. It has a PE ratio of 5.69, which is incredibly low and in value territory, and it's down over 13% for the year. So everything about this screams value. Morningstar has a buy rating and a $16 fair value estimate. This company is called Lumen Technologies Inc, L-U-M-N. Lumen Technologies is a US telecommunications company that changed its name from CenturyLink in 2020. Lumen's moving to divest some of its assets and on August 1st the company completed a 2.7 billion dollar sale of its Latin American operations to Stone Peak. This company is divesting a bunch of different pieces of their business that they've found is too far away from their core strategy. And I like when a company can find that and can do this successfully because it brings in cash flow to help just feed that thing that made them profitable in the first place. Right now though, the shares are down over 50% over the last five years, which is kind of typical whenever a company is going through this. Again, this is one of those stocks where if you looked at it real quick, you'd probably think, uh, kind of scary, a little bit risky, but I think that it's at the bottom or close to the bottom of where it will be. And it has a lot of room to grow, especially by focusing in on their core strategies and being able to just crush it from there. All right, this last company is definitely not last in the pecking order. It just happened to be the last one that I listed. And this one is in an industry that we use of their products and services daily, if not hourly, if not by the minute. To those of you that are sitting in the back row, I see you. Let's see if you can guess the company. Super solid communication company, dividend yield of over 6%, PE ratio of barely over six. It's the world's largest telecommunications company by revenue and the third largest provider of mobile telephone services in the United States. It's basically in a duopoly with another company where it controls its industry. And when you're investing in a dividend stock, you want something like this with stability and consistency long-term. It's one real competitor is Verizon, which is also a solid dividend stock, but this company is AT&T. Analysts say this company has positive subscriber growth momentum, including over 1 million postpaid net subscriber additions in the quarter. Bank of America has a buy rating and a $25 price target for this stock, which is currently right under $18 today. So this stock not only has an absolutely amazing dividend, but also has crazy growth potential. And those two put together, definitely a type of dividend stock that I'm looking at. Now, all these stocks are great, but when investing in individual companies, it can be a little bit risky. So if you're looking for less risk, but also solid up, Side, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video that I just made on the top three ETFs 
that I'm investing in right now, and it's not the S&P 500 or VU. One of these ETFs is a very high dividend yield ETF, and all of these are going to be amazing, especially if we're going into a recession. This could be one of the safest ways for you to invest your money, but long-term have crazy upside. Watch this video now.